G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder, and welcome to the new player experience, where you get to play a great game mode against some great planes, such as the KI-61-1B from the American Premium Tech Tree. This plane used to sit at a battle rating of 2.3 in arcade battles, and fought against biplanes. I'm not kidding you, this is a match against biplanes in arcade mode. Now, you don't normally see me playing arcade mode on this channel, but uh, I had to give this a go when the Shiznos on stream, you might, you guys might watch the Shiznos on Twitch. Uh, for those of you who don't, I'll leave his link in the description below. He's an insanely good player, but he is also uh, very good at uh, picking some planes that are surprisingly meta. And in this case here, we have the KI-61-1B in arcade mode. 2.3 against biplanes, and of course, once those players run out of biplanes, because they're mostly new players, they're going to uh, go to their reserves, and so it is pretty much a club fest every single time. This plane is one of the most ridiculous planes that I've ever seen in the game at the most ridiculous battle ratings I've ever seen in the game. 2.3 against things like the Heinkel 112 V5, which doesn't even stand a chance in, uh, in any situation, let alone in a vertical situation here. So, in the background, I'll probably just end up letting this play out, because nothing really interesting happens. I do a bit of rudder turning, which is something that is very common for arcade, which is where you engage the rudder, elevator, and uh, try and keep your wings stable with the ailerons to cut into your opponent. Of course, in arcade mode, if you get a leak, uh, or if you go hard on the flaps, or if you extend the gear out at high speeds, it doesn't really do anything except uh, extend your drag, and of course, with flaps, it would improve your lift at the cost of some speed. But for the most part, arcade mode is pretty simplistic, but there is some pretty fun stuff to it. And of course, you get the opportunity to switch your brain off, which is why I would actually recommend for everyone uh, maybe picking up arcade once in a while, just to have a little bit of relax. Even if it is at a sort of lower tier, grab a BF109F or perhaps something with a, with a particularly strong rudder, which is suited for the meta, and uh, go to town. But in this case here, I am basically committing a war crime. A lot of these players have very little experience with War Thunder. Most of them, uh, as I checked the stat card in other games, were like level 2. And now that I'm looking back on this footage, watching me absolutely obliterate these players, I, I feel really bad. Because these are brand new players, but that doesn't stop anyone from uh, doing this sort of stuff. It doesn't, it doesn't stop you from going and clubbing. Because if people want to play a meta vehicle, people will gravitate to a meta vehicle. And I kind of can't blame you for that. If you want to play a meta plane, then by all means, that is your absolute right. If you have unlocked that plane, well, who says how you play it? Who says what you play it against? Well, of course, Gaijin says what you play it against, and what you're playing it against are biplanes. Inexperienced players in biplanes. And here I am, pulling out all the stops because I know what to do, and these players are struggling, even in planes that can outturn me for days and days and days. And of course, when they do get their guns on me, they can't do anything about it because they have 30 cals. These guns are uh, uh, piddly, like water pistols, if you will. And here I am with 450 cals, ripping every single biplane I see to shreds. How in the hell did this ever happen? And the answer to that is Gaijin and statistics. This is one way to ruin the new player experience, and it is the most Gaijin way to do it. This is probably the most egregious, like, neglect, I guess, of the game I have ever seen. In this case here, what we have is some st statistics that on paper look okay. Because you might see a plane that is, despite having exceptional performance, performing poorly. And in this case, it looks like it might have been. This plane doesn't have the easiest guns to manage, and you have to hammer down the trigger in order to get a kill. You have to waste ammunition, but of course this is arcade mode, and in arcade mode you get free refills. So it's like you've, you've just got infinite ammo, basically. Unless you get shot down, or you know you do something stupid to your plane for it to be damaged, you can keep fighting until the end. And in this case here, I have empty water, I'm gonna still keep going because I can. You can have a fuel leak and as long as you don't hit zero, you can still keep fighting. Oil leaks, doesn't really matter. Ammunition, doesn't really matter. Yellow pilot, doesn't really matter. And of course, in arcade mode, all those weaknesses of the KI-61 that you might see in realistic battles, 
fade away a little bit. And so this gives the KI-61, combined with the reticle, of course, and combined with the in inexperience of these players, you give them such uh, an opportunity to club. And of course, because this is likely being played by players that don't really know what they're doing, maybe they've bought their first low tier premium because it's fairly inexpensive. And of course, it's a premium. It's rank two. It'll help people grind through to sort of rank three, maybe a little bit into rank four, maybe a little bit of SL growing. Maybe it'll pad out their lineup. But this plane is a fairly unassuming plane otherwise. And of course, because it's unassuming, no one plays it. And because no one plays it, it's generally played by players who don't really understand much. Whether that's they don't understand much about the game, or they don't understand much about the plane itself, because they've just bought something that's particularly unremarkable, is uh, a, di a different story. But regardless, this plane would have had poor statistics for it to go down to 2.3, and now that it's at 2.3, the performance difference, or the performance gradient as such, is so, so vast that we now have 2.3 biplane you know and ki61 to to throw into the mix there like my god this is quite the cock up you tend to see this with planes that are fairly unpopular uh things like the yak 30 i believe it is the uh three thing with like three ns23s it's got good performance but the guns are a little bit hard to aim it's kind of like an la la15 uh and of course it gets a little bit neglected it's a good plane it's certainly a good plane, but no one ever plays it. You never see it in the statistics. And now, I actually don't know what battle rating it is. It could be 8.7 for all I know. Uh, and in fact, I have a hunch that it is actually 8.7. But that, that type of plane, something that is so rarely played, can have its statistics affected in such a great way that you can really sway the balance of the matchmaker. So if you're playing really poorly in a plane that's rarely played, then you have pretty much every opportunity to throw it down in BR. And of course, you have the opposite. We had a classic example of that a few months ago with the CL13A Mark IV, which is essentially an A5 Sabre, sitting at a ripe old battle rating of potentially 9.0, which would put it in line with the MiG-17, put it in line with the F2 Sabre, and of course, would have had it see things at 10.0, which is an absolute laughable moment. And that was due to four people choosing to sweat out this game and prove that statistics are... that have to be taken with a grain of salt. Let's just say that. They're not, they're not terrible by any means. In fact, they're not, they're not awful. They're actually kind of helpful in many circumstances. They just have to be used properly. And I think that's the case with all stats, all numbers. You just have to interpret them in a way that is going to be beneficial for all parties. And in this case, Gajin seems like it's going to benefit all parties, but in reality, I'm here clubbing people that don't know what they're doing. And for me, that, uh, that addition to removing or destroying the new player experience, of course, I don't want to have to do this, although it does sort of come out as a guilty pleasure. It, it's great getting like 20, 21 kills. You'll see 21 kills in this match, like absolutely bonkers. But the fact that this plane exists in the first place the fact that i'm allowed to take this plane into such a low battle rating because of the statistics and because that does so much damage to the new player experience this is awful this is frankly disgusting and we need some form of human input in this situation for that i think that gaijin should throw in more opinions be a little bit more willing to take some player opinions on certain aircraft, especially if there is such a loud voice about these planes. And of course, low tier, no one really cares about low tier, but people do care about high tier. And so there's a lot of voices going on about high tier, high tier this, high tier that. And so in those cases, I think there is more of an opportunity for players input because there's gonna be more of it. And you'll have these, these increase in opinions. Of course, you have to play these particular vehicles to have an understanding of them. So if you don't have an understanding of them, or if you don't have them unlocked, maybe you could be barred from uh, sharing your opinion about these planes. Or perhaps if you have zero input in the battle ratings at all, you won't have any input to give. You won't be allowed to give input. But maybe there's some, some filtering to do here. 
maybe there's some human aspects that need to be put in because statistics at the moment have a few flaws that really let down the matchmaker. Now, of course, in Jets, this is this has been you know discussed to a great extent, especially looking top down versus bottom up. I've discussed this at great great length, but I wanted to highlight the new player experience version of this, the the other end, the lower spectrum, and to think that this is a real thing that happens to real players that are just starting out in the game, how would that make them continue the game? Well, the short answer is it wouldn't. The short answer is it would just make them go, you know what, fuck this, I'm sick of being bent over with no lube, I'm going to go and play something else that I'm actually good at, or that I don't have to learn for 300 hours. Having more opportunities, first of all, for new players to stay away from veterans like myself, is a great idea. That's a great start. Matching people that have had a similar number of games for the first, say, 1,000 matches. Maybe, maybe for the first 500 matches. And then throwing you in with the big boys. Maybe that would be a good start. Maybe it would be good to have a special matchmaker. Because it, maybe it would be good to, you know, bar these planes or these players from, from playing this certain BR. Who knows? You guys let me know about your ideas in the comments because you guys at the end of the day have a real diverse amount of opinions and so I can take from all of these and have a look and think about them all and think about which one might be the best and so we can come up with something that is a bit of a middle ground solution that might benefit everyone. At the end of the day I really want the new player to stick with the game and I really want the old player to continue enjoying the game or to continue suffering. So let's just take this as a lesson. Let's take this as an opportunity to better understand the game that we enjoy or, you know, the game that we suffer through. This particular game is so diverse, so big, that it's so hard to balance everything. So you do need some element of statistics. But I tell you what, if we could get a little bit more human input, I feel like that would go a long way. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy watching my content, uh, feed the algorithm. Feeding the algorithm is like the single best way to make this channel grow. Alternatively, if you're looking to pick up some stuff from War Thunder, maybe you're looking to pick up this plane to use it in RB or to try it out in Arcade where it's now been put at 3.3. Maybe you'd like to go and buy something else. If you would, using my decal, link in the description below will help out the channel immensely. Even if you buy anything small, you get a 3% discount, you get my decal, and of course, you guys are supporting the channel, giving me a little bit of a cut as well. So uh, that goes such a long way, you have no idea, and it would be amazing if you guys use that link. Of course, if you don't want to buy anything from War Thunder, but you'd still want to support the channel monetarily, there's Patreon, there's merch if you want to buy that, there's uh, plenty of other things. You can go to Air Models, pick yourself up a little diecast model. They're pretty good. They're actually really nice, and they've been a long-time support for the channel. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.